Voters in Tokyo have their say. They've given a former cabinet minister the top job in the metropolis. Yoichi Masuzoe has been elected governor. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What I want to do first as governor is to make Tokyo the best city in the world. I want to steadily tackle welfare, disaster prevention and the economy. Most of all, I want to make a success of the 2020 Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics. With all of the ballots counted, Masuzoe won 2,112,979 votes, marking a big victory over the 15 other candidates. He will replace Naoki Inose, who resigned late last year over a money scandal. The Tokyo governor's term is four years. It's a big job leading the city of 13 million, especially with the 2020 Olympics on the horizon. The budget for the Japanese capital is equivalent to that of Sweden. Masuzo is not a candidate who came out of the blue. He's a well-known figure not only in Tokyo, but across the country. Masuzo started his career as a scholar of international politics. His fame as an outspoken academic gave him a boost in winning an upper house seat in 2001. Masuzo held the post of health minister between 2007 and 2009 under three prime ministers. The 65-year-old ran as an independent in this election. But he had the recommendation of the Tokyo chapters of the governing Liberal Democratic Party and its coalition partner, New Komeito. He also had the backing of a labor federation in the Japanese capital. Local commentator Masayo Nakajima is here to put the results into perspective. Foreign media predicted that the abolishment of nuclear power would become a focal issue. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on this? Well, yes, Masuzo's competitor, former Prime Minister Hosokawa, tried to make nuclear power the focus of the election campaign. But he failed to come up with a concrete plan to fill the gap that would be created by abolishing nuclear power. Hosokawa also failed to cooperate with another candidate, Utsunomiya, who pledged to abolish nuclear power. If the two had joined forces on nuclear power, one of them could have won. Hosokawa had the backing of another former prime minister, Junichiro Koizumi, who remains popular throughout the country. But even though Many voters support reducing the nation's dependency on atomic energy. They prefer the candidate who pledged more practical measures that would not hurt the economy. Masuzo does not oppose the Prime Minister's plan to restart nuclear reactors that would have been, that have been deemed safe by regulators. Voters also appear to be focused on ways to deal with an aging society. How did Masuzo uh, deal with these issues? Well, Masuzo said that he would use his experience as health minister to make Tokyo a global leader in caring for the elderly. For example, he pledged to increase the number of nursing homes. He also focused on an event that will bring the world to the Tokyo metropolis in 2020, the Olympics. He promised to make uh, uh, Tokyo's second summer games the best ever. His campaign pledges were a bit vague but touched upon popular issues. Masuzoe ran as an independent, but the fact that Prime Minister Abe and his ruling Liberal Democratic Party supported him represented a big boost. Both Abe and the LDP enjoy relatively high public approval ratings. How will the Prime Minister and his party view Masuzoe's victory? Well, they needed a win on the municipal level after suffering defeats in a series of local elections. Abe now has an ally leading Japan's capital, one of the most important cities in Asia, and that's a big deal. He will also be a team player in the run-up to the Olympics. The Tokyo and the central governments must work hand in hand to make sure that preparations for the summer games proceed smoothly. Thanks very much for your insight, Masayo.
low-pressure system brought heavy snow to eastern Japan on Saturday and early Sunday. Although it may have been fun for children in the snow, the snow caused the cancellation of hundreds of airline flights and wreaked havoc on the roads. The biggest snowstorm in 45 years blanketed the Tokyo metropolitan area on Saturday with 27 centimeters of snow accompanied by strong winds. Saturday was a nightmare, especially for people in Tokyo. But now we can have fun in the snow, so I feel as though it's a gift. The northeast city of Sendai recorded 35 centimeters of snow by Sunday morning. That's the most in 78 years. Tokyo Electric Power Company says more than 60,000 households in the Kanto region, which includes Tokyo, were without power at one time due to the storm. And thousands remain in the dark. NHK has learned of seven deaths caused by the snowstorm so far. Snow-related accidents have injured more than 1,000 people across the country. The snowstorm also paralyzed public transportation systems. Airline officials say more than 700 flights out of Haneda Airport were canceled on Saturday and 300 more on Sunday. Japanese scientists say they have discovered a gene linked to male infertility. The finding could provide clues as to why some couples cannot procreate. The discovery was made by a team from Japan's National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology along with other institutes. The gene is called GAL NTL5. The scientists turned off the function of the gene in my sperm and found that sperm movement was reduced by 80%. They also noted that the sperm lacked the necessary proteins for motion and fertilization. They also checked the sperm of infertile men and found that in some samples the newly discovered gene had mutated and become dysfunctional. Researcher Nobuyoshi Takasaki says the gene could be used as a marker in selecting sperm for in vitro fertilization. He says it could also help scientists understand the mechanisms of infertility. <laughs>
As always, my hope is to move back into a house of my own while I'm still alive. <laughs> About 270,000 people are still living away from home. The organizers of the event say they wanted to cheer up elderly people who tend to remain secluded during the cold season. Japan's welfare ministry says the number of welfare recipients hit a new record high in November last year. In that month, officials said about 2,160,000 people received welfare benefits. The figure surpasses the previous record set last October by more than 500. This is a new record high for the second consecutive month. Ministry officials also said the number of people receiving welfare benefits could drop because of the improved employment situation in Japan. They added that the number of new recipients shrank from the comparable figure for the same period of last year. But the number of elderly and disabled people receiving benefits may have Japanese increased. Japanese food and fashion brands are trying to make inroads into Saudi Arabia, an attractive market with a wealthy consumer base. A two-week fair to introduce Japanese lifestyles opened on Sunday in Riyadh. The Japan External Trade Organization, or JETRO, is sponsoring the event. Women lined up to savor crepes at this stall run by a Tokyo-based company. The thin pancakes come with Japanese-style fillings of sweet bean paste, fruit, and other ingredients. Customers like the delicate taste and presentation. Uh, it tastes pretty good. It's soft, it's nice, it's not that heavy for the tummy. It's pretty good. It's really cute. The wrappings, the design. Yeah, I'm very excited to have it. Japanese fashion houses also want to do more business in Saudi Arabia, even though women strictly adhere to Islamic customs and wear full-body cloaks. Major Japanese department store operator Isetan Mitsukoshi Holdings has opened a temporary branch in New York City to promote Japanese brands. The specialty store will be open throughout New York Fashion Week when famous brands announce their new season's designs. The shop is part of the Japanese government's Cool Japan strategy. Products from 50 brands, including clothing by Japanese designers, accessories and food are on display. In particular, brooches made by Japanese craftsmen have been attracting the attention of customers. We want to make this kind of event a foothold for further sales outside of Japan. We'll keep throwing these events in future. Hiroshi Onishi says it is significant for the department store to sell quality Japanese items overseas.